afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Redberry View here, and welcome back to another Civil Air Patrol video. In today's video, it's just a really quick overview of the different drill symbols that you might see. Now, I'm using this as a reference. This is the Cadet Drill Guide. In here, it has a lot of great information about drill maneuvers. It has Jody's, and even on the last page has like a cadet uniform inspection sheet. And it also has like instructions on all of the drill maneuvers you could possibly need to know. And it also talks about how to instruct drill and how much drill is a good amount of drill to do during meetings. So if you do not have this, then this is a good resource. It's available online and I will include a link to the digital version down in the description down below. But back to today's video, I'm gonna talk about these symbols here really quick and easy, and it's pretty straightforward, but this can be very useful for you, especially when you are going on to some of your later drill tests when you actually have to describe formations with written symbols. And if you are showing people like using visuals and not necessarily using a demo flight, then it might be really useful to draw things out using these symbols because they are standardized. So I'm going to talk about each of these symbols, starting with this top one. And that one is just a cadet member in the flight. And so then you're like, wait, so there's one with a box and then one with a box with an X in it. How do I, I, I don't get what the difference is. Well, ones with X's in them are more of leadership positions. So this one underneath that plain old box is actually the element leader position. The flight surgeon says fall in. Those first people who fall in should be those element leaders. And there's also sometimes a position called the guide. And the guide is the person that is typically adjusting the step sizes when you all are moving in formation. A lot of units don't really use those during their squadron meetings, but that is also a position of leadership. It, just like the element leader, except that one has a tiny little circle above it. Now do not get that confused with what is the guide on bearer. The guide on bearer, if you've ever been to an activity like encampment, you always have guide ons for flights. The guide on bearer typically serves in that guide position if you're falling in with just a flight. And if you're falling in with a full squadron, then they would be standing out in the front like where the squadron commander is. And it, I, I will do diagrams in a future video of placement of where a guide on bearer should be and like pace sizes between different positions and when you're falling into different formations. That's a really loud motorcycle outside. So that don't get these confused. Sometimes they could be the same thing, but it, it just depends on what the squadron needs. Sometimes that guide is a guide on bearer. Sometimes you've only got a guide. Sometimes you don't have either, and that's okay. It just depends on what your unit needs. The one underneath that immediately has an X in the box, and then it has a cross. And it's just got a single horizontal line, and that means that it is the flight sergeant. And the way that you know it's a flight sergeant is it's because that first level of leadership, that's not someone in the flight, and that's why it's got that one line. And then the one beneath it is a squadron first sergeant, and that's why it's got two lines immediately above it. And that's so that you can look at the flight level, and then you've got the squadron level of leadership, and that's why you've got one line versus one and two lines. And then that, that same thing goes for the flight commander and the squadron commander concept, where you've got one line and a filled in circle for a flight commander, and then you've got that two line with the filled in circle for a squadron commander. Now, another note about when you're using these symbols is that uh, if this is for a future video, I'm still drawing this diagram out for you guys. But as you see here, there is this symbol. This is the flight sergeant symbol, as you remember. And right now, the cross is facing upside down. And that's because it shows where that person is facing when they are in the formation. So when people first fall in for formation, the flight sergeant faces their flight and they're like, flight, fall in. And so then the flight is facing them, they are facing the flight. And so you can see the guide, the circle is on the top, which means they're facing up or towards the flight sergeant. And then here the flight sergeant is facing down facing towards the people in their flight. So that is a, an important note to know when you've got these diagrams going on. And another thing to know about is that piece counts are very important to know 
when you are falling in. So for, for example, the one that I just showed you, when the flight sergeant is falling in a flight, the, the first element leader is going to count out three paces and then they're gonna, they're gonna stand there, they're gonna, well, they're gonna first measure off their distance from that flight sergeant. They're gonna do their three 24 inch pace steps, like three steps, 24 inches each. It's a normal pace, normal step size. And then they will do an about face and then they'll immediately do the dress right dress and they'll, well, they'll have their, their left arm up really quickly just so that when the next person falls in, then they've got the proper spacing and then drop that arm really quickly because you just automatically do it until someone fills in that position. But anyway, I'm getting a little bit off track here. Just wanted to go over these symbols. I hope this video was useful for you. I'm hoping this is actually focusing. I'm not sure if it's actually focusing when I'm showing you guys, but I hope this was a useful video. It's just a tool to be familiar with these different symbols. In a future video, I will be going over some of the additional drill tests for future achievements. I think I've already posted one and two, but I have not posted some of the other ones yet. So I do want to go over just how some of those maneuvers work so that when you do go back to in-person meetings, if you have not already, then that's something for you to, to take a look at. And if you already are meeting in person, because you could be watching this from a year, like a year from now, you could be watching this in 2023 for all I know. Whenever you're watching this video, I hope that it was a useful resource for you. And just let me know if you've got any questions in the comments down below. So thank you so much for watching. And that is all folks, until next time. Toodles.